Beautiful. Well, morning, Steve. How are you? Hello, Sally. Really great to have this chance to talk to you and to the people that'll be watching this later on. So yes, I'm in good shape. Thank you. Amazing. Well, welcome to the Raise Youth Mentoring Summit. I would like to think that most people watching this would have heard of you, but just in case any haven't, uh, Steve Bidolf AM is one of the world's best known parent educators, a psychologist for 30 years. He's now retired, but continues to write and teach. His books, including The Secret of Happy Children, Raising Boys, The New Manhood, and 10 Things Girls Need the Most, are in 6 million homes and 31 languages. They've influenced the way we look at childhood and especially the, the development of boys and men. Today, today, though, the mental health of girls and women globally is his major focus. Steve has two grown up children and lives in T Tasmania with his wife and co author, Sharon, and assorted wombats. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, wombats? Uh, well, yes, actually, uh, there's, uh, there's an update. They've all left, they've, gr they've grown up and, and left home now, uh, uh, Sally. So um, they, they occasionally they come and chew their way through a fence or something, but they're, they're, like we feel we've been successful with the wombats. They've made it into the big world now. <laughs> oh, amazing. What an adventure it sounds like. <laughs> so you, um, you've spent a lot of time with teenagers over the years. Over those years, I guess, what issues have you seen come up for young people in that 13 to 16 year old age group? Okay. Now I had to think about this question and, and because you were kind of send me the questions in advance and, and I thought, well, the people that raise, you're the experts on teenagers and you, you know so much about them. I wonder what I can add to the picture. And, and there's some things that I, that might be helpful to people to know, um, especially in the mentoring role, which is that, um, of course, what, this is the age group that starts with puberty, and 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 puberty. Everyone knows about the usual stuff about puberty, but not everyone knows the effect on that it has on the brain. And basically, um, it goes out the window at this age, and so um, it, and the reason is that the the, the the hormones of puberty restructure the whole of your brain, getting ready to become an adult. And, they, and it gets what's called pruned. And but the what you'll see if you, anyone who's got teenagers at home or or works with teenagers in any way that they can be very sensible when they're 10 or 11. There's nothing more sensible than an 11 or 12 year old child. They 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 think they can run your life and you know that you they can make dinner for the family and and you can trust them if you go down the shop, they can not burn the house down and you know. They're great, you know, and a lot of people think, wow, we're almost there, you know, with, with this kid. My 12 year old is really raised. And then what happens is puberty comes along and it just completely melts their brain. And so if you've got a 13 year old at home or that you're working with, it's like you say, how was school today? They say, school? Oh, you know, have you, you know, have you have you got your you know have you got your swimmers for school swimmers? Oh. and and it's very exasperating and and then what happens in the way we we understand this is they kind of start to work their way back through their childhood stages again and there's this thing called the the the, the 12 year old or the rule of 12 what and what you do is you subtract 12 from a teenager's age and it will give you the stage they're going through for the second time. And so it, with a 13-year-old, you take 12 away, you've got a one-year-old, a 14-year-old. And so, and so when I see you, you, you're an experienced mum, Sally, and so I see you nodding your head to this. And 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 so a 13-year-old is like a little baby. They're very dopey. Um, they're really nice. You can cuddle them and, and, and they'll, you know, lean on you on the couch and put popcorn in their mouth and everything, but you just don't expect them to organize anything. And then a, f a 14 year old, you take away 12, you get a two year old and two year olds are very, um, uh, hard work and they, and you know, they're wanting to be into everything and they're naughty. And so, 14 year old especially I, I say to my audiences when I do my, my seminars and things if you 
a 14 year old boy will argue with a road sign you know they're just a walking argument and 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 so the thing to do is to not panic about this and to 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 realize okay that's just what's happening and and then they get through it and so um keep your sense of humor don't take it too personally and and 14 year olds always settle down it, it, they don't they're not having a lot of fun being 14 no no one wants to be 14 again but they need us to be kind and understanding and and and, and then by 15 they're starting to get their brain back in gear a little bit and just gradually they they come back again and so so all the issues you know, that was your question you know, what are the issues in this age group they all kind of arise out of of this even for a you know a kid who's had a terrific safe secure start in life they're still really hard work in this age group um but if they've had anything tough happening in, as they were growing up um then of course it kind of you know say when they were really were one if if people were not very kind or or were wiped out with drugs or things like that, then then it'll be very scary for them to be thirteen because they'll go back to that again. And if if when they were a two year old, all they got was being yelled at and 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 um, smacked and things like that, then being fourteen, they'll be very on you know very on guard. And so the the thing to realize is because what, what we see with kids, and I know you've talked to Karen Young and some of the other good people in this area of, of, of things, is that the behavior that you see from a child, um, it's easy to get focused on, or they're being naughty or they're making trouble or whatever, but it's always driven by anxiety on the inside. And human beings are naturally anxious creatures and we need each other to kind of calm down and I'm I'm on the autism spectrum myself, and so I just I love it when I know my routine. But if something's not routine, I can get very anxious quite quite quickly. And and so if a um, and so whenever you're around kids, the main thing is to just calm the farm. You know, um, settle yourself down. Don't get too flustered. And there's a wonderful thing with anxiety where if the two people in the room what happens is their anxiety levels will always kind of start to average out. In, you know, if, if say there's a kid and and he's a teenager and their anxiety is really through the roof and here you come in and you're not feeling, you're feeling pretty all right. And so what happens is if they're really anxious, it's kind of easy for you to get anxious too and you can come up and meet them there. But if you, if you stay down here, then and you keep talking and you're asking them how they're going, then their anxiety will gradually come down to where you are. And, and it's not in what you say. It's not in any kind of wisdom or anything. It's just, it's just pure biology that one person can calm another. Um, and so, yeah. And so I took some, put some notes down and that was my main things to, to add that, that, that all the things we have, bullying, low self-esteem, um, self-harm, eating disorders, all of those things, of course, they're difficult and they need to get attention, um, but they're all driven by anxiety. And so any kind human being can make a huge difference to that and, and things that are regular and reliable and where you know you're not going to get yelled at. Um, and so psychiatrists and psychologists do their jobs, but what kids most need is just some nice, what exactly what you provide, which is nice, solid, reliable, kind adults who, who show up. Does that make sense, um, Sally? Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. I think just um, you sharing that knowledge with, with everyone watching this it can help level out those levels of anxiety, thinking about, you know, how can we support the young people in our lives? Um, mm. I'm wondering in that and in some of those other issues that you mentioned, do you think that there's a difference between what comes up for boys and then what's happening for girls? Oh, this, yes, this is my favorite topic because um, I, I, as you know, I wrote, I wrote a book called Raising Boys and it became the biggest selling book, parenting book in the world in this 21st century because everyone sort of did know that there were differences. And so let me let me show you um, a, a picture. This is a picture that I can you see that on your screen there, Sally? And 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 
what this is, of course, it's two little babies. And they're newborn babies and they're wrapped up in, in blankets and they're, and they're s- sitting in bed somewhere or in a hospital or something. And I always put this on the board and I say to you, look at these two babies and they're completely identical as far as we can tell. Um, but let's say this baby, the one here on on, on this side, um, let's talk about them for a minute. I'll put the drawing down and, <laughs> and keep talking. And that baby that we pointed to has three times as much chance of dying before they are 21 years old. So a threefold mortality rate. It's a pretty big difference. They have three times the chances of um, being, becoming a drug addicted than the other baby sitting right beside them. And they have a 19 times higher chance of going to prison in their lifetime. And so really dramatically different life risk factors for that for that baby on that side. Um, and particularly if, if you're a parent of teenagers or you work with teenagers, this that the thing, what are the things which make them three times more likely to die is car accidents, suicide, and um and violence. Um, and so huge um, risk factors. And of course, what is, I'll get the picture again. What's the difference? What's the difference between this baby and that baby? You know where we're going here, Sally. This one is a boy. And so being a boy is much, has incredible um, hazards built in. And and now be, so does being a girl, but they're different hazards. And we, we'll talk a bit about that. But I think every Every mum that gives birth to a boy, uh, I've talked to so many hundreds and hundreds of mums that when they said it's gonna, it's a boy, congratulations, it's a boy. Ninety percent of you is like, oh, that's lovely, and but ten percent is going, ah, oh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, will they be all right? Um, and and we didn't know what the reasons for that were. We just, it's like everyone just assumed oh you know it's a boy you know that they'll they'll be in danger and they'll they might get in lots of trouble they can get into now one of the things that we gradually began to work out is boys develop at a really different rate to girls and so for instance we now think that they shouldn't even start school at the same age that the, there's a, and there's a lot of research around the world about this that, that it's it's too they are, many boys are not ready for school because their brains haven't caught up yet with with the, you know ready to talk properly and to hold a pencil and do neat work um and in the but in the teenage years often girls will start puberty around 2 years sooner than boys and but the other thing that we realized was that and again i did a little drawing for this this is um, um, a drawing that I like to do, which is if you're a girl growing up in the any time in the you know last hundred years, the, if, if a girl growing up, usually you have mum and mum's friends and aunties and neighbours and school teachers as you're growing up. You have lots and lots of women in your life, if if you're lucky. And and so you're by the time that you're a, a young adult, um, you've had thousands of hours of studying how to be female, you know, what different kinds of female as well. You know, mum's like this, but mum's got a friend who's, you know, who's a lesbian and she's really gutsy and she really tells it like it is. And there's another friend of we got who's an artist and someone else. And so that girl's got this broad pyramid. What the drawing, what the drawing is saying is this broad pyramid that that a girl stands on, with her female role modeling. Now, when I was writing Raising Boys, the we we looked at how long, how much time do dads spend with their children? In an average family that has a dad and a mum, how much time does the dad spend? It was when I wrote the book. It was six minutes a day 
and that that was actually you know talking to their children or, or kicking a ball in the backyard and not which is watching telly or something and so when a boy grows up he hardly knows any men usually there's um if he has men in his life they don't often talk about their feelings and so boys don't get a sort of feeling of how to be a boy on the inside and so we say that the girl stands on the pyramid but the boy stands on this tiny little narrow uh, little kind of column of bricks like that and it's wobbly you know so if, if a boy is husband say if husband and wife you know have an argument she's so good at putting her case you know she's got loads of examples all her friends agree and he's standing there and he doesn't have a leg to stand on and now what males do when they're threatened or scared and i'll put this one down too is they cover up or they get aggressive and so teenage boys what we find happens is they haven't had much role modeling they feel like okay i'm supposed to be a man you know i'm 13 or 14 gotta be you know gotta be a man and and they just don't know how to do it and so what they do sally and i'd be interested if you think this is right because you know it's I'm not always right, but what we think is they grab a mask and they clamp it on. And there are three or four masks for being male. Um, there's the tough guy, you know, will belt you if you don't agree. There's the cool dude, you know, has the, I'm sure he has the kind of the sunnies on the head, you know, and, and that kind of thing, you know, and, uh, um, and he's kind of really cool. And um, there's a hardworking go-getter, you know, the, kid that gets in and works hard and and then there's the um the kind of funny guy uh who's who usually has a nickname that ends in um ie on the end of his nickname you know so warney or, or smithy or something like that and the funny guy always worries us a lot because they're particularly a, a, a suicide risk because they never let on what they're really feeling at all they pretend to be, everyone says you know he was such a you know a funny guy you know we didn't know and so, so when you have a mentee who's a teenage boy, especially in the early stages, you very likely have one of those masks on. Masks on. Um, looks really tough or looks very cool and doesn't care about anything. Or he might be a bit of a smooth talker even, you know, and has a bit of a routine going. Um, maybe a hard worker or maybe a joker. Now, those have all got their strengths. And, you know, if, if you, the neighborhood I came from when I was a kid in, 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 in a little kid was you hit first and you, and you ran. That was the rule of life where I grew up. Um, it, sometimes you need to be tough. Um, I like my life. I, I sort of got out of there. So I, I'm not tough at all. Um, but, but does that make sense in, in looking at the teenagers that, that come into your program, Sally? Does, that, does that, some of that fit? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But, um, how can we, as trusted adults, then in that in the lives of these young people, help support them and help sort of um, get move past that mask or understand what's underneath that mask as well? Yes, yes, and that, that's good. I have to remember I haven't got two hours to talk to you much <laughs> as I'm enjoying myself. But I'll just let me just balance the picture oh, with, with with girls here because, yeah. and this will answer your question as well. Yeah. That, that it's similar with girls. Now, I just checked that the writing come out the right way around. It's not back to front in the mirror. We can read that. That's good. And so with girls, the stages naught to two in a girl is being loved, loved and secure. That's all they need to, to be. All little children need is to feel loved and secure. And then two to five is to be able to explore the world and get out there and, and have adventures. And um, 12 five to 12 is about other people you know you go to school you got to get along with other people that's really big big deal it's not always easy and one of the things to watch for in your mentees is that sometimes with girls they might actually be on the spectrum but you don't you won't know that because they're not like a boy on the spectrum who just you know plays with uh, electronics all day and, and things the, the girls will often mask their symptoms but they'll be very very anxious because it's hard work for them to be social they can do it but they have to go and lie down after 10 minutes because it's just you know it's so hard 
And 11 to 14, which is starting to come towards your age group, is called finding your soul. And so what I mean by that, I think you get that intuitively what that means, but, you know, figuring out what you believe in and what you, what your values are in life and what you think is important in life, um, being creative and doing artistic things and things like that. And then 16 to 21, 14 to 21, of course, is just practicing to be an adult. And so when, with girls that, that come into your program, they'll be I did the whole age range for you because they're all, they'll be all over the show. Some kids have never felt loved and secure. And so that's what it'll be all about. And we used to, we used to feed a lot of kids. We just give them hot chocolate and raisin bread when they showed up because they just needed them to feel like they were sort of had a home to come to. Um, having adventures with some kids was good because they needed a confidence of exploring and so on. So I know it's time to wrap up, but just the, the, my, my big message, is, of course, is um, be calm, take it easy. Um, they will naturally get from you the things that they need. Um, just as, you know, when you eat an orange, your body gets the nutrients out of the orange. When you're with good people, kids will drink you. They will drink you into their idea of how to be a human being. When they're, you know, and believe in yourself because when these kids are in their 30s and 40s they will think my mentee would have said this you know they wouldn't have punched anyone they wouldn't have stressed out they would have they told me i was worth worthwhile and that i was smart and that i was was great and they'll fall back on that and so what you're already doing is brilliant and and you can just trust that and keep going does that make sense Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. And I would think that would be the biggest, um, if anything, is that the biggest message that you'd like to leave the audience with from this chat? Definitely. Yes. And, and lovely to talk to you. Thank you. You too, Steve. So anything else that you um that you wanted to add in? Um. Oh, oh no! Just to uh, that, I've made up for for the wombats now, and we have trolls now. They sort of get off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, amazing <laughs> beautiful well, thank you so much Steve for um for making this time to share all your knowledge with us today it's been uh, you... so amazing to listen to it and I'm sure um so many people watching this now will feel so much more um confident in their skills to be able to support and understand the young people in their in their lives <laughs>